Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Towards the end of Nicomachean Ethics, Book 6, Aristotle is going to discuss for us a very interesting topic which in a certain way fills in some gaps in his, his moral theory, in what we typically observe, what we might call his philosophical anthropology, his theory of, of human nature. And what this topic is has to do with virtue but virtue that is in a certain way natural to the human being or even indeed to, to certain animals other than human beings as he suggests there. This is the, the topic of the natural virtues, virtues that we would have in us by nature, fusike arete in the singular or the singular that's sort of encompassing the whole of it. Now we want to remind ourselves of what Aristotle said at the very beginning of the Nicomachean Ethics, um, that in, in Book Two, that we don't actually have virtue in us by nature. Virtue is an acquired property or quality. It's to, you know, uh, if we want to be very technical about it, it is a hexis. It is a uh, ethos. It is something that is established within us through multiple repeated actions of a certain sort. And as we're going to see, it's not just enough to just do those sorts of actions over and over again. There is some requirement that there be some practical reasoning or some intelligence involved, some deliberate moral choice. So to say that virtue could in some way be natural, going beyond the, the, the fact that we have a capacity for it, that seems to be going against what Aristotle has been telling us all along. So we, we should wonder about you know, how this would actually work. He says that everybody agrees that there are certain qualities that are there in us in a certain way that are, you know, so to speak, virtuous, or we might say even virtue-like or virtuoid. And that, that in a certain way, that pos is very important. That is weakening this, this framework. It's not saying they're exactly the same thing as virtues in us. Some people are just born to be just or born to be temperate or born as courageous. Uh, that post supplies all of the examples that he gives, and he gives you quite a, quite a few of them. Um, you know, we do talk about children as having a sort of natural sense of justice, although it's a pretty fallible one. All you got to do is put a kid in slightly wrong circumstances, and it's not going to be relied upon to, to see through good moral action. Likewise, um, some kids are more uh, prone to something like courage. Other kids are more prone to something like cowardice, but they're not truly courageous or cowards uh, or even rash, foolhardy, until they become older, become adults, have the faculty of uh, reason operative and can actually engage in moral choice in, in the full sense of the term. Likewise, temperate. Some kids are, um, you know, easy to, to, you know, sort of keep control over their appetites. Other kids have a very, very hard time with that. Um, and we could go down the, the list of all these different virtues. Some kids are naturally more friend-like with other kids. Some kids uh, tend to be more boastful. Some other kids tend to be more truthful. Some kids are more generous. Um, some kids are just obsessed with social standing. And, and honor and you know swing to one extreme or to another extreme and don't have right ambition. Every one of the virtues that Aristotle discusses we can see as in us in a sort of nascent state from uh, our, our childhood on. And so Aristotle says that, that children and even animals, if you read 
um, some of his works in which he's discussing animals, he doesn't call what they have virtue, but they do have d determinate dispositions which express one thing rather than another. So, you know, some animals are very clever, other animals are very courageous, other animals have other qualities, but they're not virtues in, in the full sense. They, they are natural dispositions. They are, um, uh, you know, a hexis fusike in the Greek, but they're not quite the same thing as, as virtue. One index of this is that these can be quite harmful when um, they're lacking what he calls, in this case, and he's using this in a very broad sense, mind or, or noose. Why do I say he's using it in a very broad sense? Because a little bit later he's going to talk about our need for phronesis. So he doesn't mean noose just in the sense of the intellectual virtue of noose or understanding or intellect. He means that <clears throat> unless we actually have developed that rational part of our soul, which children, you know, they're not to blame for the fact that they haven't developed that. It's not quite active yet. It is in the process of development. Animals, not to blame that they don't have that because that's their nature, right? They weren't born with that capacity to be fully rational. But when we're not fully rational, then these things like the natural virtues, these natural dispositions that we might praise people for. You know, we, we see a kid being generous, we praise them. Um, they're generous with the wrong person and they give away their, you know, inadvertently their personal information and get stalked as a result. Now, not so good, right? And, you know, the kid is often quite confused about this. Hey, I thought you said it was good for me to, you know, uh, be, be nice to people all the time. And then you say, hey, look, you gotta, you got to temper that a bit. You need some common sense is usually what we say. But what we're really thinking the kid needs is a good dose of phronesis, a good dose of practical wisdom. And, of course, from an Aristotelian perspective, we're really expecting a bit too much out of a child to, to have that. Um, as a matter of fact, probably a lot of the shouting and, and uh, uh, criticism that we give to kids for lacking phronesis probably uh, helps to steer some of them away from developing phronesis and maybe a sign of a lack of phronesis on our own part. Kids are going to do things partly right and also screw up. This is, this is Aristotle's perspective on that. He does not have high expectations for children. Um, so. These can be, like I put here, quite harmful when, when lacking mind. Any of the, the virtues, justice, uh, generosity, courage, um, good humor, all of these can, can go astray when we're not using our intellect. This is another reason why virtue is not simply a matter of having habits or dispositions. It is one that involves us understanding what we're doing and choosing it as a part of our, our character. The child <coughs> is not yet at that, that point, although they, they can get further and further along the spectrum. So Aristotle is going to say that the natural virtues just resemble. They have uh, the kind of uh, homoia, a kind of similarity, a kind of uh, likeness to the moral virtues, but they're not actually the moral virtues. So we want to be very clear and distinguishing these apart from each other, but also recognizing that these can kind of feed into each other. That when we see, uh, for example, a child being generous, we do want to encourage him or her in their generosity, because once we do add mind to it, intellect, uh, and they have a better sense about it, they're a little bit further along than some kid who is naturally stingy or naturally prodigal. Um, likewise, uh, a kid who already has a good disposition with respect to anger, um, we want to try to encourage that and eventually steer that into being the actual virtue of, of mildness or good temper. Same thing with courage. Same thing with temperance. We want to make use of the natural capacities that are already there and, and provide them with a better framework within which uh, they make more sense once they're integrated into the framework of intellect and choice they can become full virtues. Aristotle actually says at a couple points that certain uh, responses that we have, certain emotional responses, kind of function in the same way. So righteous indignation or nemesis can um, you know, steer in the right way become something like justice. 
um, you know, the, the kind of anger that we feel when we're being threatened uh, or when we see, say, our, our, our children threatened um, can be rightly steered into something that would, in fact, be genuine courage. We can, we can do this with, with other things. Um, so uh, this is, this is a, a very important point. The last part of this that we want to say is that Aristotle draws from this the conclusion that the virtues do, in fact, require some development of prudence, not just intellect, intellectual capacities, but prudence, the capacity to uh, figure out what the right means are within determinate situations, to steer uh, the, the, the reasoning process towards what is actually good in the different modalities of goodness for human beings, and to figure out how to get ourselves towards our, our ultimate ends. Uh, 